welcome everyone for today's second session uh, in the series of uh, healing and energizing the chakra system today we will work on healing of chakra number 2 the sanskrit name is swadhisthan in english it is a sacral chakra Swadhisthan in Sanskrit literally translates into one's own seat, and this the uh, whoever came earlier and saw the slide, the location of this chakra is uh, the chakra number one is in the perineum, the lowest tail end of the spinal cord, and this chakra is. two fingers above the perineum or roughly three fingers down the bell button so it is in between that two points so uh, most of us we know that that area is sacral area and we all have the reproductive and excretory system organs in that area so mainly this uh, physically this uh, chakra Sriyalam is on those body parts, and the location-wise, uh, hormonal glands, uh, which are in this uh, in the uh, affection of this chakra, are ovaries in women and testes in men, and both of these uh, glands work specifically on each gender to make them what they are. so that also defines uh, one's own sit secondly the um, element connected with this chakra is water we all know what water is water is very fluid and formless it can uh, water can enter into any anywhere any uh, any place even though there is a tiny bit of gap water can just go in so that's a fluidity and flexibility and also water is moving constantly water is hardly stable when the water is stable it stales and similarly when this chakra is blocked in our energy system we stale we don't feel like we exist we don't feel like we have our own seat to or throne to sit on so when it is blocked we feel that way so first last week we worked on root chakra we grounded well into the earth element of earth now earth has stabilized and now what comes next to grow more the earth has to be watered so and water always flows downward so and when water flows into the earth then changes happen and something new grows from there so today we will work on the sacral chakra with water element and the color of the chakra is orange orange color is connected with enthusiasm newness uh power uh acceptance um and um to ready to bring the change in hinduism many uh spirituality uh, oriented people prefer to wear orange color because of these uh, uh qualities it is connected with optimism and um, yeah so those are the qualities of orange color and today it as for the season wise we are in the fall and the orange color goes well in fall season as well so these are the basic elements now if we see uh, just to identify if uh, this chakra energy is deficient then we feel the rigidity in body uh, in our beliefs in our habit 
So um, people who are not willing to change much, then uh, emotional numbers, they don't feel much uh, emotion wise. And also uh, they have fear, they have, uh, their boundaries are very rigid. They cannot, very fixed boundaries. They are not flexible and open-minded. And when this energy of this chakra is in excess, then everything is opposite. Boundaries are very loose and um, uh, addictions, addictions, obsession, these are also on the excessive side. But when uh, this chakra energy is balanced, then we feel grateful, grateful for the moments what we have, we are ready to change, we are optimistic, emotionally intelligent, we have that. And uh, we have the value of self, who we are, we can accept who we are as it is. That is the number one uh, characteristics. So often, because this chakra uh, um, governs on the ovaries and testes, mainly in many cultures, uh, I think it's global, uh, boys in the childhood, they are told that boys cannot cry, boys cannot complain, boys are uh, not allowed to do um, like, show the weak weakness in their body and uh, many things on. So the boy grows up to that uh, with that mentality and that is the that creates that rigidity in the uh, that boy's mentality and then it manifests in the physical as well. Similarly, girls are told that you cannot speak that way you cannot be uh, shown as emotionally weak, you have to be brave and things like that. And in many cultures, girls are shown many, many limitations and shy, uh, so they develop as a shy person to express themselves. So these are all the issues of uh, sacral chakra. The physical complaints related to these mainly is uh, the hip area, lower back pain, hip joint issues, uh, overall rigidity, like extraordinary rigidity overall in the movement and stiffness, things like that. So today we will work on this chakra and we will get it energized first. We will activate the chakra first. So how we will do it is uh, if you have props ready, then, uh, well, I don't have props ready. We can sit in cobbler's pose or uh, it's called butterfly um, in common language. We can use the yoga blocks or if you have uh, folded blankets, two pillows, anything we can place underneath, uh, mostly knees. If it's not touching to the knees, we can move closely to, if, there, if the legs are too high, closely move towards the hips. So adjust your prop first and sit, relax, but spine straight. And very gently we warm up our palms rubbing them together. Create love in our palms. But I love myself. Set some affirmations. Emotionally, I am at the right spot. I accept who I am. And I have all the right to exist and express. The first chakra was the existence, survival, and now this is the expression to feel the pleasure, to feel the sensuality. So lightly touch the hip area. Show some love to the hip. And just breathe easy, deep, deep breaths in and out.
and we can slowly shift into another pose. If you have a bolster like that, you can use that to sit on it. This is called hero's pose. Vajrasana, Virasana, there are different names for it. If you cannot sit like that, and there is so much gap between hips and ankles, place pillows or bolster like that and just sit. That will reduce the pressure on knee joints and ankles. And breathe easy. So whichever way you find it's more easier to sit, just sit that way. And now we will activate the energy there. So the mudra we are using today is the Tattva Mudra. This is for the purity and the truth, truth of ourselves. So uh, thumb, touch base of the ring finger in both hands. And just point rest of the finger straight out Place both palms on legs. And we the seed mantra of this chakra is V U M Vam. And we will just chant as we chant Om. We will do this for five to seven times. Imagine orange color in the head, we are all wearing orange. So we already have that in our memory and mentally put mental eyes at the spot of sacral chakra. Vam. Bum. 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 Keep eyes closed. Be in the experience. Mentally take a note, whatever is happening, feeling as it is at this moment. Let's begin the yoga flow uh, we are doing today. So today's sequence will be in a one flow. We are creating fluidity in our body and mind. So I believe everyone is feeling a little bit of heat in the body and mind that we created by activating the sacral chakra. It is, I, uh, during my, spiritual journey, I met many teachers and I, it was shared with me that uh, Tibetan monks, we all know that the region is very cold and they don't wear sweaters or coats like us. They're always in their just orange clothes. They wrap on their body and they uh, chant this mantra to create heat in their body and they survive in that cold weather. So this is also channeling the sensuality and sexuality in a right direction. 
So this chakra is very, very important. If we are trying to bring change in our life, this chakra has to be energized and in alignment. So the first flow we will do is the cat and cow. So we come in all four tabletop position. Inhale, prepare. And slowly exhale out, arching the back, releasing one vertebrae at a time. And head moves last. Slowly inhale, extend each vertebrae. And keep flow, keep the fluid movement of the spine. with the breath coordination. Inhale. Exhale. And slowly come back to tabletop position. From here, we will bring hips down to the heels to sit in child's pose. Extend both hands out to the front. You can always uh, feel free to use the props needed. For this, we can widen the knees and then extend both hands out to open the hip. Slow and steady breaths in and out. Pressing into the palms, lift off, bring both knees together and burn fluid movement to the front. Low lunge, create, come into baby cobra, pull hips back. In child's pose, inhale, fluid movement to the front. Exhale, pull back into child's pose. Inhale. I'll come back to child's pose. Pressing into the palms, tuck toes, lift hips off onto the ceiling. And let's prepare the body for the next movement. Pedal heels, bending other knee, one at a time. And now stretch both heels at the same time. Press chest towards thighs. And head is between arms. Breathe easy. From here, step forward, right leg. Almost up to the palms level. You can do it incrementally. No, no problem doing that way. Bring the back knee down and toes flat. This is Anjaneyasan. Head is straight. Look straight ahead. Breathe easy. As we exhale, try to relax the pelvis. We can use the blocks here. Put both blocks under the palms. 
to ease out into the pores and also using the block will put us on a higher level so that we can relax the hips better. Exhale and slowly pull hips back and bring that leg back into the child's pose. One full breath here, pressing into the palms again, lift up, and we can go from downward facing dog or right from there, whichever way you prefer. Lunge forward, back knee and leg rested, inhale and deeper into the pose. Slowly tuck toes of the back foot and lift off both legs in the front. And we circle sweep, slowly rise up one vertebrae at a time into mountain pose and exhale, hands at heart. The last time we toss, to be well grounded well and stable, we need to um, stand on the four points of the heels, on the, on, on the soles. So one, two, three, four, four, all four points. Just plant them very well and then stand. And then circle sweep, both hands up, inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale up and exhale down. From here, we will go into wide leg stance. Both hands out to the side. Turn right foot toes to the right side. Bend the right knee so that the knee is exactly on top of the heel. Turn face towards right hand fingers. Slowly and steadily keep sinking into this pose as we expand the inner thigh muscles. Slow, steady breaths in and out. From here, we rest right elbow on right thigh. Swing the back hand from bottom up towards the front and place it by the ear and look straight ahead. Keep breathing and keep enjoying. Keep face smiley as if you're enjoying this. Yes, we are. And from here, swing that top hand back to the Warrior two, inhale. Go for reverse warrior. Inhale and exhale, reverse warrior. Extend the front hand, right hand up. It's a side bend.
and gaze at the corner of the room, top corner of the room. You are back to warrior two. And exhale, slowly straighten out both legs. Come in a comfortable wide leg stance. Pad Prasarita. So from here, we are going to fold forward. Hands at hips again. Gentle touch. Touch is a sensuality. So we gently touch and give a loving massage to our hips. Deep inhale in. Exhale, slowly fold forward, keeping spine straight, leg straight. Keep the blocks handy. Go ahead, feel free to use the blocks, either two or one, and blocks can be used in three heights. Rest both palms on the block if it is needed. Each breath out, we try to fold a little bit more. So steady deepening into this fold. Next inhalation, take both hands on the hips back of the hips, interlace fingers. These are all options. Go ahead and do it if it is possible today. If not, it's completely fine. Raise interlace fingers, both hands up towards the ceiling. Slowly, while exhaling, bring both hands back on the back of the hip. Release the palms, bring them down. Soften the knees and circle three. Very slowly rise up. Inhale and exhale, hands at heart. Beautiful. Now we will do warrior two on the other side. Again, we come into star pose. Turn the left toes out to the side, left side. Gaze to the left hand side fingers and bend left knee so that the knee is exactly on top of the heel. Slow, steady breaths in and out. And we safely expand the hip area. And we release whatever the blocking elements, blocking mentality. It is completely okay to be what we are. And slowly releasing that tightness, rigidity in the sacral area. Here we will go into Konasana. Inhale and exhale. Left or left thigh. Back hand swing from bottom up to the front. Slow, steady breaths in and out. Inhale, lift into warrior two again. I feel so great being myself. I can express freely. I can feel what I want to feel. Slow, 
Cell reverse wire. Take the black side up and backwards. Take a moment. Enjoy the surrounding. I take a pleasure in my steady moment. Take a step back, reverse volume. And inhale, coming back to warrior two. Slowly straighten, left knee, turn both feet toes to the front. Circle sleep, inhale, both hands up. And exhale, hands and heart. Here comes the next beautiful pose. We can adjust the wide leg stance a little bit for more comfort level. Toes are pointing to the corners of the mat or maybe straight, whichever is convenient on the hip area. Hands out to the side for star pose, inhale. Exhale, bend knees, sit, find a sit, beautiful throne. Fold elbows. Palms facing to front. Beautiful goddess pose. Very powerful pose. I am out of my guilt, out of my embarrassments. I have been over my weaknesses. I have learned to be who I am, I'm emotionally stable. And I can meet with people eye into eye. Slowly inhale, rise up to star pose again. And exhale, slowly bring both hands down, both feet close together. Beautiful, great job. If some of you want to just walk around and make the hips fluid, more fluid, feel free to do so. All right, next we will come to the short end of the mat. Circle sweep, inhale, both hands up. And exhale, hinging from hips, fold halfway. Halfway is leg straight, knee straight, elbow straight, spine straight, and gaze directly down on the mat. as it becomes easy and loose in the lower back and hip area, feel free to slide hands further down. Both knees soft, reach all the way down onto the mat. And then we try to just sit into Seated staff pose. Here also, we can use props. If you feel that the upper body is falling backward, seat on a folded blanket or a towel so that the posture can be supported straight. Both hands on the side of the hips, And we are preparing for our next pose. Keep the belt handy. 
the belt we used last week, feel free to use that. Circle sweep, inhale, both hands up. Exhale, hinging from hips, fold forward, keeping spine straight, legs straight, and toes pointed towards the head. Reach wherever it is possible today onto the legs. We are not forced to touch to the toes. It is my own journey and I can do at whatever level I'm comfortable with. I don't have to reach to a ideal, po ideal pose or ideal place. If you have the bolster like this and the hips are tight, we can put bolster under the knee. That will release a lot of tension in the back of the hips area, back of the thigh. And then just reach wherever with the spine straight. Knees on the floor, four five feet of it. As it is becoming loose and fluid, we can try to fold furthermore into this pose. Remember, we are not forcing, we have our own sit to sit and we can express and be however we want to be so no matter what don't feel forced to do anything not possible With an inhalation, slowly slide both hands up towards the body. Beautiful. Just take a moment to feel what it feels at this point. We can close eyes and be with ourselves. Beautiful. So now to open, I would like to show one prop. If um, anyone does not have blanket right now, no worries. But if you learn how to support this butterfly, recline butterfly pose, we use the blanket, any square blanket and fold it furthermore. Maybe I need a little bit longer. This will prop legs so well that anyone can be in this recline. Uh, Butterfly pose, Supt Baddha Konasana. So ideally we, we are laying down, but before you lay down, you must see. So wrap, wrap the blanket around the feet first and then cross it over tight and then Press it under the calves and then slowly expand and separate both knees. Try to keep the blanket just under the ankles, okay? So that will keep the legs 
feet banded and also put legs a little bit higher and now slowly lay down try it slowly lay down a blanket wrap like this will support the legs and we can easily let go of the legs in this pose this opens hips and sacral chakra very gently has to be in this pose for next 7 8 breaths Relax, steady breaths in and out. I have found my place. I can be myself. Emotionally stable. Comfortable in my body. Radiant, passionate, I'm enthusiastic to bring change in me, in my life. A beautiful orange sunset. Standing at a beach. And I see this beautiful orange reflecting in the water of the ocean. I am like this water. I'm true. I am the truth. I reflect things as it is. As I look at the sun, orange, just like a ball, I'm grabbing that ball in both of my hands and putting it at the spot of my sacral chakra. In the warmth, gentle warmth, and the orange hue is spreading into my sacral chakra area. I feel the moment and the heat.
and this orange hue is spreading all over my body. In the newness, happiness, upliftment to me. With this warmth and power, I have become more fluid, flexible in my belief. in my lifestyle. I have become more dynamic and passionate. Very slowly, I'm bringing my awareness back in the present moment. Keeping my eyes closed, I turn on the right side or whatever side I'm comfortable. In Peter 4, slowly open eyes and come to my easy sitting pose. How do we feel? Do we feel any change? Feeling more relaxed. More relaxed, yes, good. Any change in mentality? Did we do anything in sacral chakra area? Sacral chakra is the pleasure, sensuality. It's being emotionally open to accept who we are. And that kind of that kind of rigidity mentally and physically. So we be aware. So today we did this workshop. Uh, we will keep our thought process going on and keep noticing that now we have the awareness and we can think like, oh, I'm being told or I'm being verbal uh, to someone else or I'm someone else is doing it to me that don't, you cannot speak that way, you cannot do this way. And we will be aware of all of that and try to change on that and be more open-minded. Uh, we have a few minutes. Let's do uh, an experiment. 
So I will share this picture and see how it what it creates in our thought process. What happened? Any any sharing? Uh, feeling very fluid and uh, like full, um, complete, and uh, pure. That's how I felt. Looking at the water. Yeah. Mm hmm. Good sharing. What else? Anybody else looking at that water? Anything? Any? It was flowing. It was like rhythm. So I was like going with it like that. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Yes. Okay, let's uh, uh, look at something else. Okay. Any sharing? Serene and calm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Stillness. You want to share, Jyoti, when Kanti Bhai was speaking something? Kanti was saying something. Oh. It, it feel like the, the, the slow motion water flowing quietly. And then merge into the big, you know, you know, big lake. So beautiful vision. Yes, Pravin, why you want to say something? I feel the stillness. Yes, yes, yes. So all good sharing and and perfect perception of the visual. So when this chakra is blocked, we feel blocked. We feel like we cannot move. We are tight. And uh, mentally and physically, when when our hips are tight, we all know that we cannot walk fast. We take small steps, uh, and many many rigidity we feel because of the tightness and lack of movement in the hip area, right? And mentally, we also we are when we are blocked into certain type of mentality, either created by ourselves or imposed by other people we don't have much room to go anywhere so looking at the flowing water the water flows and water water makes its way anyhow it will never get flowing water will never stop it will find its way so when we are uh, in a kind of sluggishness slow mode in our life looking at the moving water will keep us energized, make us energized and feel like, oh, I got something, I have to do this, I can do this. And when we want the stability and quietness, if we look at the still water, slowly rippling water body, that will make us feel calm and sane. So we have, Anyone would say, feel in the number, percentage number, how much percentage water we have in our body? Yes, 75. 70%, right? 75, yes. Yes. So we connect very well with water element. And many people, so many people like to go to beach, 
or up to the mountains, looking at the sprinkling waterfalls and all things like that. Some people have fear of water as well. So their sacral chakra is blocked. So that is the sign. So opening and energizing sacral chakra gets us flowing freely, like flowing water. We can just take this lesson off the mat from today's class into our real lives and uh, leave that way, keeping the sacral chakra open and energized. Thank you very much for joining today's workshop.